Good morning. Uh, today is Monday, May the 11th, and uh, Monday is typically the day in my weekly schedule where I'm at home. I don't go into the church office, spend the day with, with family. I'm about to go out for a, a morning jog, run is far too generous to, uh, to refer to what I do uh, when I go out. But I'm wearing uh, this Run for Joy t-shirt uh, as a reminder of Open Door Pregnancy Center, which started their fundraising drive yesterday, their annual uh, Mother's Day to Father's Day uh, fundraising drive that they call the Baby Bottle Boomerang. So this shirt is from their 5K last year. It's going to remind me of that as I as I run uh, and as I exercise. But uh, but what we've been doing, and this is the ninth week uh, that we're starting of this staying rooted uh, exercise, and it really is an exercise. And what we've been doing is uh, reminding ourselves on a daily basis the God of the God that we serve and his unchanging character and the historical truths that are ours to, uh, to grasp onto in the midst of a world that seems so rapidly, uh, seems to be so rapidly shifting. Now we've been using two tools. We've been using the Psalms and we've been using the letters of John Newton, the, uh, uh, the slave ship captain turned pastor and, uh, and, and spiritual mentor um, in the 1700s. So it's interesting to see oftentimes how the two of them intersect um, because it's only God who would, who would kind of do that. And that's especially so as we come to Psalm 119. Now last week, uh, we ended the week with Psalm 7, 117, which is the shortest psalm in the Bible. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible. And we're going we're gonna to just go in pieces uh, over the next uh, couple of days. What Psalm 119 does uh, is it actually, it breaks up, the, se the sections are broken up corresponding to the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, and you can't see it in the English translation, but the reason why that's so is each section begins in Hebrew with the letter, with the, the successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So, so Psalm 119 verses 1 to 8 um, there's a little title in, in most English translations that says Aleph. That's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And that's because in the Hebrew, that first line of verse 1 begins with the Hebrew letter Aleph. And then verse 9 uh, starts, verse 9 to 16, is under the heading Beth. And that's because that's the letter that uh, begins that section in the, in the original Hebrew. And then all the way through the rest of the of the Hebrew alphabet, but Psalm 119 is uh, is primarily focused on the power, the beauty of God's law. And I took a, a seminary class in seminary, a one week uh, intensive class down in Charlotte uh, on Christian ethics, basically the study of right and wrong according to a Christian perspective. And every day uh, for the five days of that course, the professor would do a devotional from Psalm 119 uh, because he said, you know, understanding and not just understanding, but loving God's law uh, is the key to understanding a Christian perspective on right and wrong in the world in, in which we live. Now, there is a, there is a problem um, that John Newton actually is pointing out in his letter that, he's, that he wrote and that I've been reading about God's law. There is a problem with loving God's law, and that is that our hearts are not naturally inclined to do that. Psalm 119 verse 4 says, You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Right. So, so God's precepts, his commands should be kept diligently. Now, Newton says there's a problem with that. And the, and the problem is that in our natural state, this is what he said, um, in our natural state, we are prone to dislike God and conceive the law by which we are to be judged to be too strict in its precepts and too severe in its threatenings. In other words, we don't like it. We rebel against its, its perceived strictness and its perceived severity. And he says, in short, there are three things, three properties of the law which the natural man in his natural state cannot allow to be good. Three properties, he said, that we don't like. One, the spirituality and the strictness of the law. It's too strict. The second, it's severity. It, it, the consequences of disobeying the law seem to us to be too severe. And three, 
its leveling effect. In other words, we rebel against the fact that, that when we look at the world around us uh, and, and see other people that we perceive that we're better than, we hate the fact that the law, because of, its, because of its strictness, because of the highness of its standard, puts us on essentially level ground with other people that we perceive ourselves to be much better than. And Newton says, this, 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 this just, it, it irks us. It drives us to, to, to anger because we don't want it to be that way in our natural state. Now, the cure to that, Newton says, these prejudices against the law can only be removed by what? By the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, as we go through in coming days, Psalm 119, we're going to need to understand and remember that we need the power of the Holy Spirit to change our hearts to a disposition of love for God's law so that we can say, along with the psalmist, this is 119 verse 16, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. God's law is meant to, 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 to provide standards for us, to provide boundaries for us for our good. And when we understand the goodness of God, we can come to understand the goodness of his word. Have a great day.